What's going on y'all? It's Nick with Bear Family Farms. Today I wanted to kind of put this quick video together. I say quick, but it's probably going to end up being 15-20 minutes. Um, but basically, I want to start off by saying I'm not a financial expert or accountant or anything, or nor did I go to a business school or anything, but I mean it doesn't take a, a degree to run a su successful business, so I guess I'll just leave it at that. Um, but one thing I do know is money. I'm sure some of, a lot of you do too as well. But uh, so I'm real, real anal, I guess you can say, about tracking everything, and that goes from expenses to breeding data to everything. So I plan on making some more of these videos as far as you know the finance side and um, kind of how we track our animals and kind of all that stuff. But today this one's going to be over uh, expected gross margin. Um, but like I said, if, I, if I'm missing something, let me know. But these are, like I said, it's expected. So it kind of gives you a rough estimate on, you know, what, what to expect as far as your herd. Um, at the end of the year, we make another one of these and we kind of, we compare them to our actual margins versus what we expected to. Uh, I, like, I like doing this sheet. It gives me a, a good outside. You know, I make them five years out. Uh, helps me with my planning and whatnot, and then every year, at the end of the year, we'll go through and um, basically compare our actual input costs and all that stuff and our inventory compared to what we expected. So with that, I'll go ahead and start the the actual video portion of this. Uh, so basically, here we'll kind of run through this. Uh, made all this all this is automatic. The baseline. For this sheet was actually sent to me by Greg Christensen if any of you guys know him um, and I kind of beefed it up a little bit with a little bit more more things and kind of made it made it my own and uh, added some things in there but the first thing we're gonna go through is you know your inventory so all these numbers change automatically so it does the math for you so here we've got our opening inventory uh, at 2022 this is just a I just put these numbers in here to uh, kind of give an idea or kind of make a template for something. So um, here we got our breeding nannies. Uh, we run a seed stock operation, so I put these kind of at a seed stock price. But if you're more of a commercial producer and you value your nannies at 350, you know everything changes automatically for you. So, uh, but for this purpose, we're going to leave it at at these prices um, so here's how many you got of say each one of these different types of animals as far as male and female for the kid or for the goats and um, it adds it up basically pretty self-explanatory and then we we'll also have our guard dogs in here if, if you have guard dogs um, and you know at the end of the year do another inventory this is just a kind of an outlook uh, it's not exact but it's going to give you um, more of an idea on you know what it's going to cost you to run your animals for that year um, so we'll go ahead and start moving down uh, first thing we're going to go over is this section here so the feed so we've got a couple different things here we got protein supplement feed you know that could protein supplement could be the same thing as feed but we'll just go ahead and delete that so feed could be uh, cubes or uh, alfalfa pellets or whatever you're feeding your your animals your goats um, here's how many goat or how many head you plan on feeding throughout that year again it's just a rough estimate all these numbers were just I put these in here for the very purpose of this video so uh, you know, up here, you know, you said you're going to start with 76 minus these four dogs. So you're going to have 72 head of goats. Uh, obviously, those nannies and those replacement nannies and breeding nannies are going to have kids. Uh, but you're also going to sell some and you're going to call some and all that stuff. So I just put 100 goats here for the sake of the year. Uh, this one means, you know, one pound per head per day uh, off these 100 nannies. And you're going to feed them 60 days a year. 
Um, so basically, roughly more or less once a week, you're going to be feeding these animals um, <clears throat> this amount. But like I said earlier, if you feed them two pounds, you know, it changes your value. So watch this value here, 1680. If I'm feeding two pounds, everything changes. That changes and your grand total changes. Uh, let's say you feed more than 60 days out of the 52 or 60 days out of the 365 days. If you're feeding, you know, 80 days, you know, you just put 80 in here and that'll change this value here. Same deal. It just goes down the road uh, for all these values, but we'll go ahead and go back. So 1,200 pounds, we're just multiplying, uh, you know, 100 times 2 pounds. Or we're going to do one like I said earlier. 100 pounds times 1 is 100 pounds times 60. It's going to give you 6,000 pounds of feed. We buy them by the sack. It's easier for us to buy them by the sack because uh, we move the goats so often that um, buying it by the ton and carrying buckets around is a lot, a uh, little bit harder going miles down the road and stuff like that. We just throw a sack in the back of a full wheeler or side by side. And this price here, this 28 cents a pound is, you can see your note in there, price per pound on a 50 pound sack of feed at an average cost of $14 a sack. Uh, if you get it cheaper, you get it cheaper. If you get it more expensive, you get it more expensive. You'll just have to factor in that uh, that math on your own. So if you had a $14 sack, or you had a $13 sack, I want to say 12, 12 divided by uh, 50 pounds, it's 24, 24 cents. So, you know, you would just take the, uh, cost that it costs you for that sack and divide it by the 50 pounds and you'll get your uh, price per pound here and then that'll go here same thing for the hay if you're good you're feeding 100 head of goats hay and you know they're eating two pounds of hay we even we'll even say three pounds of hay because they eat you know we're gonna have some waste so you're factoring a waste you're feeding them three months out of the year 90 days uh, you're getting you know 27,000 pounds and then here you got your note Average price per round bill, we buy it by the round bill. Um, this year costs are going up, obviously, so everything's sky high. Uh, so, you know, get an average, you know, thousand pound round bill for 80 bucks. That's uh, eight pennies per pound. And then that factors in this total cost. If you're getting them for $70 a bill, the math on that, you would, the same thing like the feed, you would just take uh, the price it costs you for that bale, $70 divided by a thousand. And that's quick math. It'll just be seven cents a pound, and then that number changes. So, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and go back. We made it eighty cents, or eight cents a pound. Uh, mineral, same thing. You know, you're eating a. This says pounds, uh, but it really this is ounces. This per six. Well, you see the note. They're one ounce a day, not pound. Um, so they'll take in about one ounce. You can even factor in a waste. You want to say 1.2 ounces. Uh, they're going to eat it 365 days a year. And that's that total amount of pounds. So the math in this one is factored in for ounces. You can see it up here at the top. I don't know, even know if you can see my, uh, my mouse cursor. Hopefully you can, so I don't have to redo this video. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, you know, you divide it by 16, you know. Uh, or times 16, you're going to get, uh, no, no, divided by 16 to get your pounds. <laughs> uh, you know, and then this is practically factored in. Our mineral price has gone up here, so we're getting 28 cents a pound, or $28 a pound, $28 a sack for a 25 pound sack, uh, which is uh, 76 per pound, 76 cents per pound. I don't know what that's saying. that hold on let me do the math on this i can fix this right now um divided by 25. oh that's right i don't know why this this note is wrong so let's go ahead and change that but like i said if your prices are different you're going to have to do this math on your own but it's it's pretty quick it's pretty simple um didn't say 112. All right, and then that gives you a grand total health. So let's go down the health here. Uh, same thing, 100 head and your number of treatments. Um, one treatment a year. If you're doing more, then you're doing more. Or, 
and you're not doing any, you're not doing any. But this fact, this 140 is based off a $140 bottle of, you know, uh, Valbazin or something, a 200 milliliter bottle. Uh, but all these have notes in them, so it kind of tells you, you know, the math to do. So the average price of a dewormer bottle for 200 milliliters is $140 uh, in our area. So, you know, you take that, you do divide 200 milliliters by two or you take that 140 divided by 200 milliliters that gives you your cost per uh and you have to divide that number again by two milliliters because that's what you know a dose is you know 200 milliliters isn't going to give 200 doses um so you know you factor in the math on that and it gives you the cost here same thing with your cdt if you're giving one treatment to all your goats every year this is explained in this note kind of what to do if your price changes just follow the math in that note instead of ninety dollars maybe it's eighty dollars whatnot uh, and it'll factor it'll make this number for you on its own same thing with ultra boss uh, you just take the price of of your bottle of ultra boss or buying a big bottle buying a small bottle and then uh, you divide it by your treatments and that gives you the number of treatments each how much it each costs and then this in here, I just put a factor in here for kidding miscellaneous, maybe 100 head, four treatments. It's really not four treatments. It's just a basic number to give me a, give you an estimate and a dollar. So I'll just factors in $400 of, uh, who knows, you know, just, you never know. Maybe one has to go to the actual vet or you actually got to get a vet out. Factor in a little bit of a, a wigger room for them. And then, you know, other vet supplies. You know, let's say syringes or ear tags or something like that. You know, kind of, kind of put your own cost. And again, this is not a actual one. I guess you call it. It's just it's supposed to give you an outlook for the year. So I make these five years out, and that kind of how I make my business plans. Uh, so it gives me an idea and, and goals and whatnot. And it's good to have these numbers in the back of your head when you're buying things. You're just like, oh, I can cut costs there. Or, you know, I ended up getting bales for $60 a bale instead of $80 a bale or something like that. But, uh, and then your livestock guardian dogs. Uh, you got your number of livestock guardian dogs here. Let's say they eat a pound a day of feed. Uh, you know, then you, this is based off a $27 sack of 50 pound sack. Uh, we feed Retriever brand from Tracker Supply, the high protein. It's about $27 a sack right now. So you just take 50 pounds, divide that by 27, it gives you the cost per pound. And then all these numbers multiplied together give you 788. Same thing with the vet visits. You know, probably at least one time a year, all your dog's going to go to the vet. The average price visit visit of 125 is $500 a year. And then miscellaneous, uh, this is just a, you know, $400. It's just at $400 extra, let's say, you're building uh, dog feeders or you're buying dog feeders or uh, you're buying collars, you're tracking collars or whatever that factors that stuff in there too. Uh, and then we'll go, before we go over any of this stuff, let's crump over here and go to the sales. So this kind of tells you, you know, kind of your outlook on what you're planning on selling. You got your nannies, you got your billies, your nanny kids, billies, and then your coals or your weathers. Uh, and you kind of give them an average price of what you think you're going to sell them for based on your last year's numbers or whatnot. Um, and, you know, this, these two together add this. These all add up. And then they create this number here. So let's say you wanted to sell six. You watch this number here. It'll change. Six nannies. Well, that changes. And all this changes. Everything changes automatically. The only things that don't change automatically or some of these with the little notes. Just follow the notes and they'll tell you what to do. Anything else is gonna be uh, auto-populated. Um, so let's say you sell, you know, Billy a breeding or a herd sire for 800 bucks or something. Really, you might sell them for more. You might, hopefully you're selling them for more than that. But like I said, I just put these numbers in here just to, for the purpose of this video. Uh, nanny kids. Billy Kids, your Mutton Weathers, um, you know, and these numbers add up together and they add, they make this number up. So all these numbers are important because it creates your direct costs and all these numbers over here are going to create auto-populated. And then if you're selling, if you're breeding your, your dogs, you know, you can put that in here. Let's say you got two females, they each have a litter of six pups 
they got six female pups and six male pups and you're selling them you can you know that factors that price in and it changes these numbers but for the purpose of this video we're going to keep it like this um, and then you're going to have your purchases let's say you're buying some replacements um, some replacement nanny kids or something like that that factors this in here so you're buying uh, you know you're buying another dog to to train you know all that stuff is auto generated it's pretty pretty cool uh, so what we'll do is we'll jump over here so you know you've got your operating interest you're making some 10% on you know your investment so that's H16 you know your beginning value here all your assets added up times 10% is what that number is your feed and supplement is being auto generated from this number over here your health is being is this number here livestock guardian is here and it adds up creates your direct costs okay so this is what their direct cost it was to raise basically a hundred head and four dogs um, so this little bar over here I created uh, to kind of give you an outlook on your, the, this, these numbers are solely off based off these 41 head of goats that you're selling for this year. Uh, so you can tell right here it says feed supplement broken down by the number of a head. So you're getting your cost per animal unit. That number is generated divided by the 100 head. Uh, so the average cost to raise the number of head that you sold for that year. So to sell, to raise these 41 goats for the year, it costs you $94.00. And 25 cents uh, based on all these numbers it just you know this equation that I put in here it creates uh, that number so you sold 41 goats and for those 41 goats each one it cost you $94 to raise uh, the average cost to raise then sell so that's basically uh, this $94 times your 41 head so to sell 41 head costs you almost $4,000 but um, the profit that your this this number here this number here is your total sales which you sold 41 goats for 1200 or 12100 minus what it costs you to raise them that gives you your direct profit number so for every goat that you sold uh, you're making $200 and what it, where are you getting that $200 that's where this little chart right here down here comes in is where is this number coming from that's your average price you sold your goat for so basically it's uh, 12,100 divided by 41 you're gonna get this number here so this number $295 and 12 cents minus your $94 is where you're getting your $200 here so basically asset you know Spanish goat profit per head you sold 41 goats at an average price of $295 and 12 cents uh, direct profit of those was two hundred dollars and eighty seven cents uh, so you're making eight thousand dollars profit on those goats uh, and then, like I said this is not this is just for the goats that you're selling this is not your whole enterprise but this this stuff down here is kind of this what I'm highlighting and this is just kind of stuff that I like to keep in the back of my head um, but and then this stuff here is your gross margin so you're getting Everybody knows what gross margin is. You got your closing value, so obviously you're gonna you're gonna get some replacements. You're gonna retain some of your own goats. You're not gonna sell them all, and you're gonna build your herd. And then you have your sales. How much did you sell? That number comes from here again. Purchases. Well, what did you purchase? You purchased some another dog and a couple more replacement nannies, and then your beginning value, which comes from here. Uh, and then all that, you know, it'll gener it generates this direct or this gross margin. Uh, it's a lot of talking, I know. Uh, so if you got any questions on it, please feel free to message us and, and whatnot. Um, not a very good explainer, um, but <laughs> I try and do my best. Uh, this kind of stuff, is, like I said, it just, it just helps me see things the bigger picture and make my plans for the years coming. Um, and like I said, you know, all these numbers change. If you have 100 breeding nannies or 200 breeding nannies, uh, 
valued at whatever price you value them at and that's why it's important to track your expenses i'll make another video on that on how we track everything and how you can get these numbers all these numbers right here more accurate um but for time's sake you know i'm gonna end the video <laughs> Uh, I know it's a lot. If you guys want this video, feel free to send send us an email. It'll be the easiest way for us to send it to you. Um, and you can make more. If you need some help making some more uh, things, I can help you on that. Uh, ours, our personal one that we keep, you know, we have different enterprises. So down here we'll have a tab for our Spanish goats. We'll have a tab for sheep. We'll have a tab for horses. Uh, all that, all the stuff, all the different enterprises that we run, they'll have their own tab. You know, and that way I can divide my enterprises and I can see exactly what I'm spending money on and what that asset or that enterprise is making me uh, at the end of the year. But you can't really compare your expectations to your actual uh, numbers if you're not tracking anything. So in the next video, we'll go over that sometime uh, in the near future. But thanks, guys. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Uh, I'll take some more time going through some more of this stuff if, if you guys need it. Um, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks.